for patients who are not treated. Regarding transplantation, transplant patients are immune suppressed, and this is why they are more risky for the, uh, the disease. And this is the cohort of patients documenting in 5% of patients diagnosed with COVID-19, and these patients with, uh, has 24% mortality rate. And this is the outcome, AKI, needing replacement therapy died or recovered, and as you see, transplanted patients are in risk. This is the contradictory to the previous one. There is no difference between transplant and non-transplant regarding COVID in this cohort of patients. But this is a French data registry for solid organ transplantation, showing the, how, how they deal with the patient, how they treat the, the COVID state, but the most importantly, 30-day mortality was 22%. Uh, so COVID in kidney transplant recipients portends a high risk of mortality. This is a case of transplant patient who has uh, rejection that was treated with cocktail of anti-rejection, including this C4D, this is antibody meat rejection. He was treated with cocktail, including rituximab. And after a period of time, because of persistent lymphopenia, the patient has SARS-CoV-2 and the evidence of collapsing glomerulopathy in uh, the transplanted kidney. So this is the case of collapsing uh, in kidney transplant patients. The patient may present with rejection, cortical infarction, and this is a case, this is a transplant, and this is a native kidney. The, in transplant kidney here, there is infarct in the areas of the graft. If we put in mind, we start anticoagulation in the early beginning, it may make great difference. This is our protocol for manipulating of immune suppression. Depends upon the clinical manifestation, comorbidities. So if we don't have CT data suggestive of coronavirus, we, uh, we, and we have PCR confirmed corona, we, we have or stop antiproliferative and continue other immune suppression. We have or stop antiproliferative in patients with comorbidities, age above 65, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and to monitor the patient well. If the patient has evidence of CT affection uh, with no or mild apyrexia, no hypoxemia, this oral prednisone 10 milligram, continuing tacrolimus targeting four to six nanogram ml, and stop antiproliferative and assisting the patient. If the patient state deteriorates, we can stop tacrolimus. If we have CT evidence of uh, uh, pneumonia, SARS-CoV-2 pneumonia, with comorbidities or high-grade fever or hypoxemia, we give oral steroid. We allow tacrolimus for uh, here 4.6, four, 4 to 6, here 3 to, to 4, stop antiproliferative and assist the patient to stop tacrolimus if there is any deterioration. Here I want to ask a question. If we have a patient on the transplant list and then he has COVID-19 documented, and treated and recovered, he went, to, he went to do transplantation. The general rules in general surgery is to wait for two weeks after complete recovery of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 disease. In transplant patients, and because of the problems in false negative and others, it is uh, judicious to wait uh, for a prolonged period of time. But it, is def it differs. In this letter of the editor, in this letter, the, uh, recommend the suggestion is to wait four weeks. Uh, the, but, and after transplantation, if we diagnose COVID-19, we should follow the patient because the patient may relapse after improvement. This is for tocilizumab experience in COVID in solid organ transplant patients, matched case control study. And this is the tocilizumab for 29 cases, matching control in 29 cases. In this matched control uh, cohort study, tocilizumab appeared to be safe, but was not associated with decreased 90-day mortality. How to predict the severity of the disease in transplant patient? It seemed that this, this article is interesting because it addresses biomarkers. The, the problem in this study is the small sample size, four to nine kidney transplant recipients, but this is the cutoff point for lab. If CRB is above 100 nanogram, milligram per liter, interleukin-6 above 65 nanogram per liter, 
increase on high sensitivity troponin above 30 nanogram per liter and the dimer above 960 nanogram per ml, we can expect severe disease and mortality in transplant patients. Uh, this is another study showing the, the manifestations in transplant patients. This is a percentage of patients who have fe fever, cough, dyspnea, and others. And this is the outcome, mortality, or ARDAS. And here, I would like to add lactic dehydrogenase to, uh, uh, to the previous biomarker. So high LDH can predict borer disease. This is a very interesting data. If we compare COVID patient, COVID disease, uh, for between transplanted patient versus waitlisted hemodialysis patients. So we have wait list for transplantation versus transplantation. Who will have severe disease? This is a very nice data because it carry, carries a message. So we have waitlisted 56 patients waiting for transplantation, and we have transplanted patients with corona, 80 patients. Comparing these together, you can see here different manifestation, fever, cough, short of breeze, fatigue, fatigue here was higher in uh, the waitlisted patient in comparison to transplant patients and the other manifestations. The fate, the waitlist hospitalized in 82% in transplant 6, 65%. So it is uh, the difference here. Uh, mortality, 34% of which listed patient died, but in transplant only 16% died. So this study raises a question, why to lock down transplantation program? It's better to prepare ourselves for transplantation because it has better outcome than dialysis patients. Again, this is just to show you the, the difference uh, factors associated with mortality in patients with COVID the unit weight list is associated with 2.6 fold higher mortality. So to be to put all this data in mind, diabetes also is associated with poorer outcome. So it's better to enhance transplantation. So in comparison to transplantation, the weight list, this is the weight list, the mortality is higher in weight list.